And man, in prayer one night, just as clear as day, it scared me. It was so clear. I mean, it was like, I don't have you here just to make the Hall of Fame. I have you here so you can reach men. And man, I got off my knees fighting. This is Entrepreneurs the Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is the playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing with Entrepreneur the Playbook and talk about playbooks and playmakers. I have one of the greatest playmakers of all time and an incredible story. You and I share so much on the inside. I wish I shared more of what you have on the outside. <laughs> I, I dream of being a Hall of Famer. But Tim Brown, Hall Thank of you. Fame. Good to be here. Oakland Raider, which kind of breaks my heart because you see my Philip Rivers jersey <laughs> up there. Yeah, it's sort of like hurting my, my left side of my face here. But, but we'll I, I, I got to tell you this about the Raiders. We'll start here because obviously growing up in San Diego, it's tough uh, to, to have Raiders on my show and to be a fan. But now that they've moved and... <laughs> The Raiders are in uh, Vegas. I actually feel like this open heart. Vance Mueller and I played college football together. Wow, okay. So that was my first kind of slip. Yeah, I yeah, I slip to the Raiders. That out. Right, okay. Um, but I, I'm, I'm swaying. I told my wife, I said, I, I don't know how this is happening, but I want to go to, when they open that stadium, I want to go to a few games and I might go, I talk about the spirit of excellence. I might move over to the commitment to excellence. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, it's just going to be such an incredible um, atmosphere up there. You know, when... When you go to Vegas now, I've been to Vegas several times this year for different events. The Raiders are having all their community events in Vegas right now. Already. They, they're, they're not doing anything in Oakland anymore. And um, the city has just already um, embraced the silver and black, man. It, it's really incredible what's happening. It was it was going so well, they had to stop ticket sales. Wow. Because they wanted to be able, yeah, they yeah. wanted to save something for family and friends. And I think the Golden Knights doing so well had oh, a yeah, lot to that, do too, right? Yeah, I went yeah. to the playoff yeah. game. And it was an incredible experience. We yeah. showed up. I flew in 15 minutes before the game. Was lucky. Kind of came right over. I'm friends with Leonce's family. And nobody was anywhere except for in their seats. I thought I was literally in the wrong arena. <laughs> you know, it was incredible. Yeah. Everyone had jerseys on. Right. And right. I was thinking initially, wow, what a smart move by the Raiders because they're a national and now international team. Everybody will fly there. Right, right, To right. see them. Yeah. But I have a feeling that you know, the Las Vegas people are going to fill up the stadium and those tickets are going to be really yeah. expensive. I, I tell you what, man, it's it's crazy what's happening. And they're shocked. You know, I mean, we're in 18 and they're talking about 20 playing there in 20. And right now it's out of control. They, they're they trying to figure out a way to, to uh, corral this thing to keep everything on track. But uh, if they play well this year, and <laughs> I think they it's will. really going to be, yeah, and, and they should be incredible. You know, by the time they get there in three years, they should be vying for a championship. Yeah, well, they're not going to be very competitive with my Chargers. I think we got like three fans left, <laughs> me and my son. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's get back because you and I share something in common as well. When I say on the inside, is we're both faith based people. And I think a lot of that come, you seem like you're a mama's boy like me. Is, is that true? No doubt. No doubt about it. And Absolutely. Tell me, I mean, your career was really interesting as I look back. I, I knew a lot about you in your playing days, but, you know, your mom, like my mom, wasn't so hip on you playing football when you first started. Tell me a little bit about that story. Yeah, you know, my mom uh, grew up in a very religious family. Um, so for her, sports was was literally the Antichrist. I mean, I mean it, <laughs> I it was like, it was no joke. I mean, that that stuff is a devil because every, anything that kept you away from, from serving God, in her opinion, was... Um, not her opinion, the church's opinion was was Antichrist. And, and um, so, I mean, we had some real serious conversations about this uh, when I wanted to start playing at 12 and 13. And basically, she said I couldn't play. But my dad would always sign the paper. So and she <laughs> never knew I was playing until I really got to high school, you know. But, and then still in high school, she made you play in the band. Well, I, I was in the marching band my, my freshman year. Um, so, I, so I played freshman football, but I was in the marching band. So when I made the varsity team my sophomore year, she still thought that I was in the marching band. And then, you know, crazy me, scored a couple touchdowns and got my name in the newspaper and her friends called like, oh, Timmy's in the paper. And and the devil's got a hold of Timmy. So, I mean, we had a conversation to have, but I was like, he he signed the paper, it was poor that my dad. He took so, the heat. so well, I'm glad he that took he the heat did. For me. Yeah. Now, you know, it, it's interesting because you and I both know because of the work that we've done, that sometimes that when we're doing things that may seem unaligned with being of service, we end up being at the highest level of service no because doubt. we have a platform. No doubt. No and doubt. at what age did you kind of realize, wow, you know, this football, 
it may or may not be my end all career, but it certainly is a platform for me to be of service. And I'm actually helping my mom and living and trying to please her. Man, let me tell you something. I mean, that was really something. And I talk about this in my book that I struggle with, um, you know, all through my 20s because, you know, I'm winning Heisman's, going to Pro Bowls, <clears throat> you know, leading the league in receptions, you know, a couple of years, you know, when I'm returner, 25, 26, you know, making touchdowns. It, you know, you know, so I'm thinking I'm doing everything I need to do. And and I, I had a real issue because of how I grew up, you know, and, you know, everything my, my mom, my pastor would say to me, God is putting you in this place for a reason. And I was like, yeah, for me to score touchdowns, <laughs> <You're right. Make laughs> for money me to make money, for exactly. me to, you know, I've have all there. the women I want, you know, yeah. then, you know, and and that's just how I thought. And I can remember, man, you know, when I was 26, 27, doing everything that I was doing that in the middle of the night or early in the morning or late at night, I was just almost haunted by, you know, what I was supposed to be doing. And it's like God was saying to me, oh, you know, you think that you got yourself in this position, you know. And <laughs> I, was, I was reminded that how, you know, I went to a, a high school that was 425 and one, my three years on varsity, that the only reason Notre Dame saw me is because <clears throat> they came to recruit another kid from another school, and I just happened to go off. I scored four, four touchdowns. touchdowns right. <laughs> Never scored four touchdowns in 27 no years, but I scored it. Right? Yeah, yeah, but so I was literally been reminded of all this stuff. Oh, you 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 became the first receiver to win the Heisman, but you think it's you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the problem we're having here? Yeah, I, and my so. favorite book, Surrender Experiment, because I sat at 32 years old, multimillionaire, Ferrari Porsche, be- you see my beautiful family, and Rancho Santa Fe, and I lied in bed, I built this home, and I had the same epiphany, you know, like, wait a second, I'm right. empty. Right, right. Wait, maybe I'm not so talented. Right. And I, right. and, you know, and I had surround myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas, right. went away, and the only one that saved me was my wife, because she told me a simple thing. She said, one, I'm not happy. Two, take stock in who you were. Because my wife didn't know me since the fourth grade. Mm. And she kept saying, you're not paying attention. Right. You're not being grateful. Right. You're right. not being forgiving. You're not being accountable. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're not living an inspired life. Wow. Right. And, yeah. and I'm listening, but I have that everything's going great because we have lots of money. That's right. And, That's I, right. and I, I literally right. at one time told my wife, and you probably had this philosophy, I, she was mad at me. And I said, look around you. <laughs> like I literally <laughs> right, said right, that. I'm like, right, right, what are right, you talking right. about? You're right. not happy. Yeah. Look around you. Yeah. And yeah. she said, you're lost. Right. And right. sure enough, uh, God gave me a great lesson, right? He took yeah. everything away from me. Well, well, yeah, yeah. And and that's a lesson you don't want to learn, yeah, but no. uh, but sometimes it, it takes that, you know. And, and for me, you know, I mean, finally, when I decided to, you know, let me change my life, let me live the life that God wants me to live, uh, my wife and I was having this conversation just last night because she was talking about how ultra conservative I am. Yeah. And I said, well, you do, you may need to have a conversation with a couple of my boys because, you know, she doesn't believe I used to go to parties. She doesn't believe I used to hang out. She doesn't believe right. I used to curse people out. She, cause right. she's, she hasn't, she's never seen That's that. That's not the guy she fell in love right? with. And, uh, but, you know, my point to her was that when I changed, I wanted to, you know, I wanted people to see that I have changed. I mean, the things I used to say and do, I, I don't do anymore. And, I, and that's for a reason. But but still with that, man, you know, I was 32, 33 years old. I can remember the first time somebody said I may make the Hall of Fame. And that was at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, I had a good year. So the guy was basically saying, oh, you're definitely going to make the Hall of Fame. And I can remember going, yeah, you know, all right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And, man, in prayer one night, just as clear as day. Scared me. It was so clear. I mean, it was like I don't have you here just to make the Hall of Fame. I have you here so you can reach men. And man, I got off my knees fighting. Oh, hey, hey, I need to be at the Hall of Fame, right? You know, I got a thumb that does this. I got a shoulder that pops out. I got eleven inch scar on my knee from that surgery I had back in '89. <laughs> I need to be in the Hall of Fame. And over the next couple of weeks, man, I was just reminded of, you know, a brother coming, a young brother coming to me in the league, you know, uh, in in a locker room and ask me a question about, you know, hey, how was it when you got in the league? Uh, you know, how did you deal with this? But it just allowed me to tell my story, you know, of how I used to be this way and now I'm this way. And these guys were like, they like my wife, like, I don't believe that. Right. Tim Brown, I don't believe you should curse the coaches out, <laughs> curse the referee. I don't believe that, Tim Brown. I don't believe that. You know right. what I mean? But so I was, I realized what God was doing. He was allowing me to stay around, you know, and the only way you're going to stay around, you got to play good football. Yeah, yeah, at that age, otherwise you're going to be kicked out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But he was allowing me to stay around so I can show all these young brothers. You know, I, I got a, I got a, a letter from uh, Namdi Amsawa. 
I got a letter from him. I share my Laker seats with Namde. Oh, is that right? Yeah, with Diane Cannon. So we split That's half seats with Diane. Great That's guy. Funny. Great guy. I, I got a letter from him last summer, and he said to me, he was a picture of his two kids. And one kid had my jersey on, and one kid has had his jersey on. And he said to me, I just want to thank you for showing me the way. Uh, because of you, I know what it uh, means to be a to to live this life the proper way. I mean, I I, I was done. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was on the floor crying the whole deal because I realized, man, if you just be patient and listen to what the man is saying, that you know, you know, things will work out for you. You know. Yeah. Now I was blessed to run Lee Steinberg, one of the most notable sports okay. yeah, agencies. Absolutely. So you have yeah. some great characters like my business partner Warren Moon, mm-hmm. and I have had hundreds of people that we've given scholarships to college, and he's well, changed their lives. And I know. To Warren, who played for so long, that means the most to him as well. But what means even more is when <clears throat> and how you've influenced or affected your own children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tell me a, a little bit about your son in a conversation that you may have had for the Man, Hall of Fame with you, your son. Let me tell you, I, uh, how old is he? He is 15 now. Okay. Uh, at this time, he was 12. Yeah. Um, and um, of course, it was my sixth year being up for the Hall of Fame, and I finally make it. So after Baker, Dave Baker leaves the room, you know, I, you know, call my mom, of course, call the family and everybody screaming and yelling. And somebody made the, the comment that, well, you should have been in years ago. And I repeated you and the a lot of other. People. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> and I repeated the comment. You know, I was like, yeah, you're right. I probably should have been in years ago. Right. And, uh, and I was sitting on the bed and he just sat right next to me. Let me finish the conversation. And he said to me, he said, Dad, um, think about this. If you would have gone in six years ago, me and he has a twin sister, Marmar. He said, me and Marmar wouldn't understand what this is all about. But now we do. Wow. <laughs> so uh-huh. I, I felt like such a hill, man. That's Here I am thinking about me. Again, you know, who, who's you in know, control? Right, right, right. What lessons but, are here? Yeah, now I have I have kids. All my kids understand exactly what their dad has accomplished. They know, and I don't have to explain to them. This is what dad. You know, they know exactly what this is all about. And you know, um, it just showed. It was just you know uh, 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 another piece of selfishness, man. That you knew that you had to get get rid of. You know. Yeah, it's it's amazing because I look at fans. And I, I look at people that have to wait for things, right? I would say, you know, everything comes in the right way at the right. perfect time. Right. And it comes with so much more value, and especially for some reason, wide receivers. You have Andre Reed, mm-hmm. Chris Carter, yourself, and T.O. T- right, right. Right. And so it's just a position that there's a lot, a lot of guys to choose from. And, it, and the variables always are different with receivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they yeah. always need a quarterback. Yeah. Right. 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 So, you know, the quarterbacks right. are going to get in because they draw, but you know, we wait, we wait for certain things, and it's better. And I look at, I'm a Cleveland, I was born in Akron, Ohio, so okay, I'm a okay. Cle- Cleveland Cavs fan. Sure. And when they won that championship, mm. right? Everybody cried. And my old, and right, I had right. the same experience, too, because yeah. I took my six-year-old son, mm-hmm. who had just really gotten to understand basketball. Okay. Thank okay. goodness for EA, because it taught him all the sports <laughs> right. better than I could. <laughs> right. And here we were at game seven. And he thought he was a Steph Curry fan. Mm. By mm. the end of the game, he was a LeBron James wow. fan. And they wow. won. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then going to the World Series, you know, and watching that with Warren Moon, like all these experiences that Absolutely. I think, you know, I've been a Lakers fan as well. Sure. But the championships don't mean anything. Right. They, right they're right, fun. Right. Right. right but right. compared to that, that moment where I called my 77 year old aunt in Akron, Ohio, and her crying on the phone. Yeah. Right. And so, and, but I just having your son there, what an incredible, they're there to remind us of the truth. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Right? The, Absolutely. the truth about ourselves, Absolutely. the truth about others, and Absolutely. we're there to empower them to hopefully keep those attitudes and just like your mom did. Right, right, you, right. Your mom did. And Absolutely. Now, t- your book's name is? Uh, the Making of a Man, How Men and Boys Honor God and Live with Integrity. That's so, awesome. And uh, when you get on Amazon? Yeah. Barnes Amazon, and Noble. Yeah, yeah, it's it's everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Let, let me tell you this story about my mom, Please. man, because I think um, this really... Um, set the tone for who I was going to be. Um, so I went to Heisman. Next year I make the make the uh, Pro Bowl, right? So if you're going to play football, that's two pretty good years back to yeah. back. And you your know? first play was a touchdown. And my first play that. with the Rangers <laughs> was a touchdown. I guess San Diego. To, compared to your first college play, which was a fumble, <laughs> was right? a fumble, yeah. right. Yeah. Big improvement. I remember <laughs> right. it only because it was a Charger game. So. <laughs> right. So, um, so I go home, man, and when I get home, there's a big sign outside our door that said, uh, on our porch, said, uh, Welcome home, Heisman Trophy winner, Pro Bowler Tim Brown. So literally, man, I get out of the car. <clears throat> yeah. 
you know, walk up to the porch and she's there, man. She greets me, you know, we love you. You know, we're so proud of you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know you are, you know, that's what I'm saying under my breath. And then what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And uh, she said, oh, did you see the sign? I said, yeah. She said, well, you know why it's out here? And I said, no, because she said, all of this is going to stay outside of my house. Wow. When you come in my house, you're not going to be this guy. You're going to be Timmy. So I went from, to, yes, ma'am. And, <laughs> yeah. And that's basically who I've been ever since because, you know, I was thinking I had to be that guy. I had to, you know, sure. come in with the swagger. I had to do that. And she just reminded me, this is a place of refuge for you here. This, when you come here, you don't have to be this guy. You're going to be Timmy here. Right. Go take trash out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so, so um, and, you know, I, I think, man, when you have people like that around you to uh, really keep you focused, because I, I believe the, the biggest problem that athletes have is when their families become their fans. Oh, tell me about when, it. When all of a sudden your son can do no wrong in your eyes, that's a problem, because if you're not going to tell him no, then he's not going to listen to anybody. Coaches, friends, uh, teammates, he's not going to listen to anybody. But, you know, I've always had people around me who, you know, weren't afraid to tell me that when I was wrong. And uh, and I think for me, that's been a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's interesting because I went, you know, Warren and I are very close and met, met my wife and my mother, like those people for me. And it was interesting the first time my, my wife loves to talk trash. You know, she's five feet and you can see 100 pounds. But right, right. Warren and I are both terrified of her. But literally, she sat the whole dinner the first time we went to dinner doing that to me, right, in front of Warren. Just what David does, and just putting me in my place because Warren was so excited. We had started this business and she's like, oh, you know, Dave's done this and he's done. And she's like, well, no, no, let me tell you about Dave. Right, right, the real like, Dave. It's the right. real Dave. <laughs> right. And at the end of dinner, I was kind of nervous because Warren and I were close. We had started a business, but... You know, we're in business 10 yeah. years together now. Right, we're married. Right, right, right. And so I, I was almost upset with her. Like, why, why are you doing this in front of Warren? You know, I'm hypersensitive. And she literally, I love this because Warren looked at me afterwards. Uh, he put his arm around me and he goes, you are lucky. L- yeah. like, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, your wife is your biggest fan. Yeah. And yeah. for him, because his mother's the same way to him. Sure, sure, right? sure, sure. Harold. Right, 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 right. Harold, Harold Harold, right, right. Right. And, right. and he, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I was kind of almost apologetic. Like, right, she was right, tough right. on He's all, oh, my, she actually cares about you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought as gorgeous as she is, she hit married you for your money. But no, <laughs> she actually cares about you. And we do, though. We we need the most relative people yeah. to be real yeah. and, and to say no. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. All right, uh, as we get to the last question, and I know th- this is important, you know, it, it's a legacy question, which is I know any faith-based person successful like yourself wants to leave a legacy. If you could give one gift to humanity, what would that gift be? Man, look, I, I, I just believe that we're all here for one reason, and that's to worship worship God. And, um, um, you know, we were laying in bed this morning looking at TV, and things were coming on. And um, I think there was a, I won't mention the young lady's name, but she is <clears throat> in and out of sobriety. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know, cocaine, you know, she, she solves a yeah. cocaine problem. Then she is alcohol, then it's pills and she's searching. She's just searching and she's searching in all the wrong places. And not one time have you ever heard her mention, and she's a very popular young lady. Uh, you know, I'm trying to serve God. Or I'm, I'm going to serve God. Or I'm going to do because, you know, people have to realize that once you really say, I am going to live for him. Then that means, you know, it's like I told my wife, you don't ever have to worry about me doing certain things because I'm going to always love God more than I love you. You know, because when you make me mad, I can't go out and do something crazy just because, because my, 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 um, my love is here, you know, with, with, with Christ. And, you know, so, I mean, my thing and, and the thing that I try and get over, and I, I'm not a, you know, I'm not somebody who's going to beat somebody over the head with the Bible. Yeah. When the opportunity comes up, I take it. I'm yeah. never going to pass on the opportunity, but, um, you know. Try every, interviewing Ray Lewis. Oh, God. He, yeah, he, yeah, he, he's a Bible thumper. We, yeah, but I, lo- I loved it, man. I, except for when he he's, leaned over and he's, he's like, Dave, he's he grabbed my leg. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Because he has something going through him right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I put scriptures out every day on, on my social media sites or whatever. But, uh, 
uh, you know, because I think it's important to people to realize, man, all your help is right there in the Bible. You know, and I all my hashtag is read the Bible. Hell is real. You know, what I mean, um, because I believe that, uh, you know, that's the answer to, you know, to all your issues, uh, because once you turn it over to Christ, he's going to solve your issue. It may like you said earlier, it may not happen overnight. Because he wants you to go through stuff, you know, be, so when you get that at the end, you can say, man, you know, wow, I really sacrificed. So, you know, uh, you're, you're a much stronger person. But uh, that's where I am. man. and, um, you know, I, I say in my in my book and I said in my Hall of Fame speech at the end, that at the end of my day, you know, I want my kids to say that uh, my dad was a great person. He was a great football player and all that stuff. But the most important thing for him was for, for us to serve God. And that's that's the legacy that I want to live. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, th- I hope I never back off that. If I do, then <laughs> you got know there's a problem with me. Yeah. Uh, but um, that's where I am at this particular point, man, because, I mean, Christ and God has been so good to me. And, you know, all the things that, um, you know, businesses and things of this nature that, that I'm involved in and how doors are opening that, you know, I can't open by myself. You that. know, my wife is looking to be a little funny right now because I got some stuff going on that's that's pretty unique. <laughs> and she's starting to see, you know, after all the struggles with businesses, you know, she's starting to see the, the doors open. And uh, and it's, it's pretty wild how they're opening. But, you know, I, I just believe it's, it's because of who you are and who you serve. Yeah, it's amazing. You're an overnight except success after 30 <laughs> yeah, years yeah, right. of challenges. Um, <laughs> it, it's funny because, and I'm going to end on this. You know, I grew up Jewish, and my brother's a famous rabbi. Wow. But so when I start talking of being of service and God and even Christ, you know, what, what helped me, because I grew up in a different culture, mm-hmm. was trying to define things in different terms. So sure. for me, when I started defining Christ, as my higher self mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and everybody can choose what it means right, to them. Right. right? right but, right, right. but sometimes I think people of other religions or non-religions, they, they cheat themselves. They're not more interested than interesting. They don't really think through, like I used to tell people, they say, Oh, you're Jewish. You don't believe in Jesus. I said, hold on a second. Right. right I believe right. in Jesus. I just believe you need to walk like Jesus. Right, that was right, the first right, step for me right, to understand. Right, I want to walk like right, Jesus. Right. You know, just saying that, Hey, all this, the bad things I was doing, I'm forgiven because I accept right, you know, right, Christ. Right. No, no. Accepting your higher self means walking the walk. walk. It means walking the walk. It means Absolutely. walking the walk. Yeah. And so people talk about being a believer. You believe well, believing means you gotta walk. Yeah, you can't you just walk. Uh, you, oh, I believe. <laughs> right. And 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 you and you really do is my point. You know, you live to that. a higher self. I, I say it's a consistent every day persistent without quit, enjoyment or inspiration of the pursuit of your potential. Right? That Christ like that potential, that truth. And I, you know, I know I'm not a Raider fan, but I am swaying that way. And after meeting you, I, I'm definitely even a bigger Tim Brown fan. Well, we got to go to Raider game together. So we'll, we'll give you that experience, okay, man. I'm going to hold you to Let's it. Let's do it. Let's I, my, do it. My first, my first Raider game was on the sideline. Bo Jackson, you were oh, playing. Man. Okay. Bo, Bo was playing, but Vance played behind Bo. Right. right. And and Vance gave me uh, sideline passes. And Bo Jackson turned the corner. And it was one of the most depressing days of my life because I realized – I will never play in the NFL. <laughs> that man went by and said, he's playing, it's like watching Tiger Woods hit a ball. Uh, it was like, crazy. He plays it a different crazy. game, and you did too. Crazy. Well, um, but, you know, I mean, in practice, man, you would see Bo do things, man, and you just said, that's that's just not human. I nah, mean, he wasn't human. Yeah, I mean, it was just crazy. So, but, well, yeah. Awesome. Well, you saw the best of the best. At, <laughs> that's for sure. And no you. So, I, I really appreciate you taking you, the Dave. time. Appreciate it you. It is your anniversary, so I want to say happy anniversary. Thank you very much. I appreciate and it. And you are blessed to have your mother and your wife like Absolutely. me Absolutely. Uh, leading the way no and allowing things things that happen for us. No doubt. Congratulations. You. Appreciate you both. Thank you, man. All right. Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing, here with the incredible Tim Brown on Entrepreneur, The Playbook.